guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is going to be on gut inflammation and how it prevents you from healing. We're going to dive into the causes of gut inflammation. We're going to dive into what gut inflammation does and how we can prevent it and help your body heal. So let's dive in. Anyone that has a chronic health issue, whether it's fatigue, whether it's cognitive issues, mood issues, hormone issues, gut inflammation is going to be part of the foundation, whether you have symptoms of it, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, pain, or not. A lot of extra intestinal symptoms are, or I should say a lot of gut symptoms are extra intestinal, meaning they don't involve gut problems. And this is really difficult for most people to connect and put their finger on where their issues are coming from. Functional medicine world, we're always looking upstream to get to the body systems that may not be imbalanced that are causing symptoms downstream. So if you're enjoying these videos, thumbs up, hit the bell button for, to get, for get notifications on future videos, and put comments down below. I've already improved some of the, uh, the writing here, so hopefully it's a little bit bigger this time around so you guys can read it better. So let's dive in. What are the causes of gut inflammation? So a couple of the big causes are gonna be food. Eating food that has allergenic properties, or if you have genetic sensitivities like gluten sensitivity, may not be an allergy like an IgE issue where you have an EpiPen and you have to inject it because your throat closes or peanuts. It may be more of a sensitivity and your immune system is responding outside of your typical anaphylactic IgE response. We can have other types of immune issues that are IgA, IgG, even T cell mediated immune responses and your gut is gonna respond via this inflammation. You're gonna make cytokines and interleukins and all of these things are gonna hit your immune cells which are in your gut. 80% are in your gut, that's in your stomach, and your malt and that's in your small intestine. And when your immune cells hit these cytokines, it produces a protein called calprotectin. So we can see increased calprotectin, we can see increased IgA from the inflammation because our immune system is hyper-responding. Foods are gonna be the big ones. So of course, grains, legumes, dairy, especially the casein protein. Also, um, refined sugar. These things create inflammation. Inflammation creates cortisol and that can take your gut lining, which is like your microvilli here. These line your small intestine. This is your bloodstream here. And these are like little mini vacuum cleaners and they help suck up nutrients, whether it's vitamin C, whether it's iron, whether it's magnesium. These nutrients have to get absorbed by these microvilli. And if we have gut inflammation, that's gonna to start to actually erode some of these microvilli. We see it in celiac disease, that's like the utmost extreme example where we have an 80% reduction in the microvilli, but we can have gut inflammation that makes it hard to absorb a lot of these nutrients. The more inflamed our gut is, the faster our motility is. So it could be harder to absorb because we're flushing a lot of the food and the nutrients out too fast and we don't absorb it. And also sometimes the inflammation can slow down our motility and that can cause us to reabsorb a lot of our toxic debris because instead of having an 18 to 24 hour motility time frame, right? Food comes in, it's out in 18 to 24 hours. Well, now it's taking longer. So there's an increased risk of us being able to reabsorb toxins, which is not good. If you want to test your transit time, feel free and do some activated charcoal. You'll see the stool go black on the way out or beets. You'll see your stool go red on the way out. So take the charcoal or the beets, hit your stopwatch, and then look for whenever that stool comes out red or black and hit the stops and then you know where you're at. So what are the causes? Food's gonna be a big one. Food's number one. Okay, number two is gonna be infections. This could be H. pylori. H. pylori is notorious because that can go and that lines your, it can affect the, the gastric part of the intestinal system, your stomach, and the H. pylori are helico, right? H stands for helicobacter, so it's a helix shape and it can screw into the gut lining and it's known to create ulcers and gut inflammation and predispose gastric or stomach cancer. So H. pylori is big. Various parasites like Giardia, Blasto, Cryptosporidium, Diathamoeba fragilis, these are all big things. Uh, SIBO or, or dysbiosis, general bad bacterial overgrowth that's migrating up from the large intestine or the colon 
into the small intestine, or just general bad bacteria that's overgrown because of refined sugar, because of poor digestion, and because of inflammation from foods. So big ones are gonna be foods, infections. The third is gonna be just, um, I would say, low HCL and enzymes. Now, this one right here, these things can actually make that worse. So these guys over here can make that worse. So the more stressed you are, we're gonna decrease our stomach acid, we're gonna decrease our enzymes. The more we're in a fight or flight nervous system response from either food, infections, or it could be emotional stressors, that's gonna decrease our HCL, decrease our enzymes, and also decrease our bile salts too, which are important for breaking down fat. So if we don't have good HCL, good enzymes, good fat, we're not gonna break down our food. Then the food becomes a stressor because it putrefies, ferments, and rancidifies in our intestines. What does gut inflammation do? One of the big things, it increases or it can decrease motility. It can cause you to have diarrhea or it can slow it down where you're not moving it out fast enough and you're reabsorbing toxins. Number two, it's going to affect the absorption of nutrients like I told you in this microvilli analogy up here. And then number three, it's going to activate our immune system. And when our immune system is activated, typically there's gut permeability. Food's not being digested or it's going undigested into our bloodstream and that causes an immune reaction, and our immune system is hyper-responding to these foods or bacterial toxins that are now in the bloodstream. So how to prevent it? So get the foods right, like I talked about up here. Basically, we're reverse engineering the stuff up here. Get the food right, autoimmune paleo, paleo template. Get the digestive secretions on track. We're gonna work on getting the infections eradicated, but in general, we're looking at the six R's, and I kind of made up this variation, but we're removing the bad foods. We're replacing the enzymes and acids so we can better digest our food. We're repairing the gut lining with healing nutrients, glutamine, aloe, slippery elm, DGL licorice, zinc carnosine, um, vitamin U, which is commonly found in sauerkraut. These are really good, important compounds to help the gut inflammation. We may deal with the hormone stress. If we're, our hormones are stressed and we have low cortisol or our cortisol is high and we're breaking down our gut lining, getting the hormones in check so we can regulate inflammation and energy better. People who typically have a lot of gut inflammation tend to not have a lot of energy because they're not absorbing food and because their immune system is sucking up a lot of resources. When your immune system is hyperactive, think about it when you're getting sick, your immune system is hyper responding to whatever virus or bacteria getting exposed to. When you get sick, are you typically tired or energized? All right. You're tired because your immune system is sucking resources. So a lot of people, when their gut's chronically inflamed, their immune system is sucking resources from them. So being moody and having energy issues is a common problem. So get your gut tested, get your hormones tested, make sure you work with a good functional medicine doctor that can dial in a complete program that looks at the gut looks at the hormones, looks at infections, make sure you're digesting your food, and then make sure you get to the root underlying physical, chemical, and emotional stressors, whether it's family issues or relationship issues, or you hate your job, whatever those emotional stressors are, or the physical stressors, chronic pain, over-exercising, and then obviously the chemical stressors, which are up here, food, infections, um, it could easily be not enough digestive secretions, toxins. We got to make sure the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors are right first. That's the first S. That's the stressors. When that S is out of balance, the body systems start to dysfunction. When your body systems dysfunction, this is where symptoms occur. And your symptoms could be mood, it could be energy, it could be poor digestion. So you gotta look at the underlying stressors that may have started everything. You have to make sure we put a check mark in and resolve that. We have to do tests to dive in and look at the underlying systems to make sure they're functioning well and if they're not, support them and treat them. And then when we address these two, this just naturally takes care of itself. The symptoms will naturally take care of itself. We may want to do palliative support to help with the mood or to help with the energy or to help with the digestion. That's fine, but we have to make sure we're going upstream. Conventional medicine is notorious for giving 
a Fexer or an SSRI or a Benzo for the mood or just giving maybe a PPI or a proton pump inhibitor for the digestion or energy giving Adderall or some kind of a stimulant, that doesn't fix it. Natural medicine does things too. They may say, let's give valerian root to help with mood or let's give ginseng to help with energy. Nothing wrong with that, but we have to make sure we're going upstream to the underlying stressors and systems first. Does that make sense? Hope it does. And if you guys are enjoying this content, give me a thumbs up, hit the share, get the bell so you get notification of my new videos coming up. And if you want to dive deeper with myself or my colleagues on issues that may be happening to you regarding your gut or issues that may be emanating downstream, click down below and schedule a consult. Again, thanks for enjoying the video and I'll be in touch. We'll talk soon. Take care. Bye y'all.